Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us for another session of Build Your AutoCAD IQ. Uh, today we'll be talking about Back to Basics, reusing content with ease. Uh, Volker did present this uh, similar content back uh, maybe about a year ago, um, but he'll have some new tips and tricks for you. And uh, let's see. All right, um, so that speaking of, uh, Volker Coco will be our presenter today. Volker, do you want to say a couple words about yourself? Hey, sure. Hello, everybody. Thanks for uh, joining us again. Uh, again, Volker Coco. I'm a uh, technical support specialist here in Lake Oswego, Oregon, and uh, doing product support, trying to help everybody out, doing these webinars. And... Um, just a little background is that, uh, as far as my knowledge of AutoCAD, been working with it since uh, release 10, so um, that would be about 1991, and uh, done a lot of CAD stuff, so man CAD management, drafting, resellers, and now Autodesk, and I love it here. Thanks, Victoria. Thanks, Volker. Uh, I'm Victoria Studley. I work with Volker as well um, as a technical support specialist for the AutoCAD team I'm based out of Manchester, New Hampshire. Uh, I've been working in AutoCAD since a, well, the late 90s, early 2000 or so. Um, I spent the uh, first few years of my career working in various uh, architectural and engineering firms around the Boston area before joining Autodesk. Uh, we also have a moderator and live help uh, expert elite, Noman Miswarala. Noman, do you want to say hi? Hello, everyone. This is Noman Miswarala from uh, Cincinnati, Ohio, and uh, I'm an Autodesk expert elite since last year, and uh, I've been using AutoCAD since version 2.6, I think back in the 80s sometimes. I uh, can't remember, but I do remember the five and a quarter inch floppy disks, so, uh, and swapping multiples of them. Uh, but I've uh, been a CAD manager and uh, now currently I'm working as a BIM manager for GBB and Architects and I've been there for about 14 years. Great, thanks Doman. Okay, so before we get started today, we have a couple of housekeeping things that we typically cover. Uh, feel free to leave questions in the chat window. Um, we'll answer them as time allows. And uh, let's see, the session is being recorded and we'll make some links available to you in the registration reminder that you receive in the post webinar survey that you'll receive and uh, in the chat window. You can ask those questions as uh, I said before. Um, okay, so this is our Autodesk help webinar series. Uh, we particularly are talking about build your AutoCAD IQ. Uh, some of the past ones that we've presented our uh, external references, some back to basics, modify commands. Uh, we had a book to the third dimension series about using uh, surfaces in AutoCAD. And uh, let's see, we did um, working with layers and then some tools for navigation last week. You can check all of these out on our YouTube channel. Uh, you can find that on YouTube by searching for AutoCAD Exchange build your AutoCAD IQ, or you can download the slide deck here and just click on the link right inside the slide here. And we'd just like to take a moment to talk about the AutoCAD Customer Council. Um, if you want to get involved with uh, providing feedback to the development team, influence the future release of AutoCAD, uh, tell us what you want. Tell us what you like, what you don't like, what you want to see. Um, you can become part of the beta program. Um, you can have access to early ideas, designs, and builds. Um, like I said, to pro provide some feedback about what you'd like to see in future releases and uh, get your feedback addressed directly. So in order to get involved, just email autocad.beta at autodesk.com or autocad.lt.council at autodesk.com, depending on which program you'd like to uh, get involved with there. And then one more thing here, our Autodesk Knowledge Network featured articles for the week. Uh, these are the top downloaded articles on AKN, and you can find them there. Um, we have that coordination model OSNAP support uh, fix for AutoCAD 2016. 
and then some other service packs and downloads, some free educational software, uh, some viewers for different AutoCAD file types. And then there are two hotfixes that were released recently, Hotfix 1 and Hotfix 2, if you're using AutoCAD or AutoCAD LT 2016. And there are a couple of quick links for you to get to those in the future. And without further ado, uh, we'll put the week's agenda up. Um, before we uh, talk about that, though, let's run a couple of polls. So the first thing we'd like to know, is this your first Autodesk Help webinar with us? Are you returning or, um, or are you joining us for the first time? It looks like most of you have been with us before. Uh, we have a few newcomers. So welcome to those who are joining us for the first time and welcome back to those of you who are joining us again. I'll just share that result with you real quick. And so that's 91% of you are joining us again, and 9% of you are joining us for the second time, or for, for the first time. <laughs> All right, next question here. We'd like to know, which AutoCAD-based application do you use? Are you using uh, the full version of AutoCAD, or using AutoCAD LT, or using one of our verticals like AutoCAD Architecture, MEP, Electrical, Mechanical? We're using one of our infrastructure products like Civil 3D or Map 3D. Uh, or are you using something else out there? So let's close that and I'll share the results. It looks like 36% uh, AutoCAD, 27% LT, 15% uh, Architecture and MEP, and 21% Civil. And let's throw one last poll up here before we get started. Uh, we just started uh, talking about this a couple weeks ago. We'd like to know, uh, have you joined the AutoCAD Customer Council? Okay, and it looks like about 90, well, 91% have not, but we've got about 9 or 10% of you out there who have. All right, Volker. Um, with that, uh, Volker's going to be presenting today uh, this week's agenda. He'll be talking about the Design Center interface, how to add content using Design Center, adding content to tool palettes, and then he'll talk a little bit about tool palette management in AutoCAD. Uh, so let me turn this over to Volker and you can get started. All right. Thanks, Victoria. Um, yeah, and um, just briefly here, hopefully we can see my screen. Hey, welcome back, everybody, for those who um, are returning. And um, Victoria, can we see my screen? Yes, we can. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going, no, no, we can't. Yep. All right. So welcome back, everybody. And thank you for joining us for uh, those of you who uh, are t attending for the first time. So as Victoria said, we are going to be doing a um, uh, presentation here on Design Center. And um, we did do a similar presentation about a year ago. At that time, I think we had about 25 attendees. So uh, we've come a long way, and uh, this is a um, – I'm actually quite surprised at how um, forgotten or, or not even – I should say neglected Design Center is. Design Center is a um, – I call it a harvester of drawings, okay? It allows me to organize my drawing data and reuse the content from that, uh, those drawings uh, very easily in a new project or an existing uh, project. We're also going to be talking about how to use tool palettes uh, in conjunction with Design Center. So it's basically an introduction to tool palettes as well. 
So first of all, I guess it'd be a good idea to show you where we can find Design Center. Design Center is just a palette, okay? And if we go to the View tab, we have our palettes listed here, and so we can find Design Center here. In addition to that, we can also go to the Insert tab, and we can select Design Center under the Content panel. You can also type AD Center, or if you like to use the command line like I do, you can type ADC. Regardless of how you access um, the command, you're going to get this palette appearing. Uh, so if you've used palettes, most of us have, uh, you know, for properties or even the tool palettes, uh, if you've worked with those a little bit, this works just like any other palette. You can right mouse click over that title bar. You can then allow it to dock, anchor left or anchor right and dock, and auto hide as well. So, uh, you know, this is great to have on a different monitor or if you don't have dual monitors or three monitors for that matter, um, you can easily auto hide it on uh, after anchoring it either to the left or right. And I'll just do that quickly here. And because it's anchored like this, it allows me to have quick access to that palette. And you can do this with any palette. So uh, it can be docked or in auto hide mode. So, Design Center, very cool tool. You'll see that here we have a uh, folder list, and that is under the Folders tab. This is actually, uh, you could also uh, commonly call this a tree view of uh, the fi files and folders on your hard drive as well as on network locations. So, depending on what, uh, where you have your data stored, uh, you can easily access that data using this tree view. For what it's worth, Design Center has been around for a long time. Um, it was introduced in AutoCAD in AutoCAD 2000, so that was, um, well, I think we're around 2000, and uh, uh, that was AutoCAD. AutoCAD LT actually had this introduced in LT97, so about the time of release 14. Uh, so it's been around a while. It was called the Content Explorer back then. Just a little trivia. But it's been around a while, but a lot of people don't really uh, use it that much. I, I think it's one of the greatest tools out there. Um, so what do we do with it? Well, we can access information off of our hard drive. We can also grab information from open drawings. We'll talk more about this. Let's talk first of all about uh, the toolbar itself. Here, the load command is just a way to open up a drawing. And not just a drawing, um, the load command allows me to actually access data from uh, uh, such as TIFF files, uh, from drawing templates, uh, any kind of images really, as well as hatch patterns. So uh, this opens up quite a few file types, uh, pretty much any file type that AutoCAD can handle. Get back to the load a little bit later, just like a lot of these tools. We also have a back and forward button here, as well as a history of files that I've worked with or accessed using Design Center uh, for the uh, back and forward prompts. This, of course, takes us up one level. We also have a search function. So if I'm looking for a particular hatch pattern, I'll demonstrate that a little later, um, I could, if I know the name of the pattern or just want to find all hatch patterns uh, in a particular folder or folder structure, I can use this search command. If we frequently need to access a particular drawing file, we can add it to our favorites. And I'll do that shortly as well. And it basically just creates a link uh, that allows us to get to those drawings quickly. Regardless of where I'm at, if I need to get back to my home folder, I just click on this home button. And this path can be changed using a command called ADC navigate. So I'm going to type that in right now at the command line. 
DC navigate. And the default path right now takes us to the Design Center samples folder in your AutoCAD um, uh, uh, application folder under program files. Okay, so that, that it, it's just blank right there. But if I add a path like um, to my drawing data, then that would be the home path in Design Center. I can also set that to a um, uh, particular path using the right mouse click menu. So in this case here, if I wanted the AutoCAD 2014 folder to be my home path, I would click set as home. Here we can toggle on or off the tree view if that gets to be in the way. Depending on screen real estate, you may want to or maybe not do that. We also have this preview window that is toggled on or off. You'll see uh, what that shows us in a few minutes. And then there's the description window. Uh, when you're creating a block or uh, have a drawing with, and you're using the DWG props command, you could easily add a description which would then appear in that pane. So, uh, and of course, we can toggle between large icons, small icons, uh, details, and a list view. It all depends on your comfort with uh, how you want to see data displayed. All right, so, well, that's all fine and dandy, huh? But what good is this going to do me? Well, let's say that um, I need to work on a project for a client, or I'm starting a new project for my company, and um, I need to just use some different standards. I need to use some existing information that I know is available in other drawings. Uh, oftentimes, we'll open up a drawing and then use copy and paste, or we'll use the insert command to uh, insert the objects or entities from that drawing. Design Center allows me to grab to see what's in those drawing files that I have, uh, be they standards files or just um, older projects, and then insert that information into my current drawing. So let me just show you. This is a just a start from scratch template. We have one layer in it, layer zero. If I go into the text style command, we have standard and annotative styles. And I'll just go into one more, the dim style command. And here we have just the standard and annotative di dimension style. I know that I need to work with a particular uh, drawing as a base. It's a floor plan. And so what I can easily do is go to Design Center here. And I'll go ahead and minimize this tree view a little bit. And we will go to my folder where I have my contact. And as I click on that folder, it shows me the drawing files which are in that folder. If I select one of those drawing files, it shows me a preview, and you'll see that it does give me a description um, uh, as to what's, uh, in this case, last saved by. I can certainly add more information to a, uh, a description of the drawing within the DWG props command. But notice here in the tree view that we have a plus sign next to basic plan DWG and complex. Okay, in fact, all of these have plus signs next to them. And if I click on any one of these, we have this listing, which now appears in the content pane. These items here, this is the, the styles and objects in the drawing that AutoCAD can work with. On a geekier level, these are called dictionaries, um, but uh, you'll probably never use that term in AutoCAD uh, for this. It's just your stuff, right? Technical verbiage, stuff. If I select blocks and double click on it, or I could have just selected here, it then shows me all the blocks that are in that particular drawing. So I'm a title block, um, a desk, cubicle, and in this particular drawing as well, I may have some dimension styles already created. 
We also have some layers in here as well. A couple of layouts, line types. Not many line types, just your defaults. And uh, let's go to the textiles. We do have some textiles in here. So all this stuff is available for reuse. Go ahead and select this drawing here. And we'll start off a little backwards here. What I'm going to do is uh, take this drawing here. And in my new project drawing, I'm going to go ahead and um, oops, go to content here. In the content view, I'm going to go ahead and right mouse click over that drawing image. Or it could just be the name, depending on how my view is set up. And I'm going to attach this as an XREF. So I don't even have to go into the external reference manager. I just select this and attach it as a reference file. And I will just go ahead and leave all the options here. I'm insertion point, I'm just going to leave it 0, 0, and click OK. Zooming to extents, here's my reference file. So, uh, and this is treated like any other external reference, obviously. But uh, it's one quick way to get to my drawing and insert it without going to the reference manager. All right, so in this drawing still, we have some reference layers and layer zero. And if I, you know, I, I now need to, I'm doing the interior design here, maybe adding some furniture and also doing some landscaping. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and select my complex drawing here. And I'll see what blocks are in here. And I notice that, uh, yes, this is what I'm looking for. I need to go ahead and add this cubicle. So I can do this a couple of different ways. By right mouse clicking, I can insert this as a block. Or I can double click on it. So let's first of all do this, though. I'm going to go ahead and pick and drag. And that allows me to see if we can get away from that. Okay, That allows me to drag this and plop it into my drawing. All right, so not very precise there is how I placed it, but um, I was easily able to put that into my drawing. I can also do this. I can double click on it, and doing that brings up the insert dialog. So I have a little more control here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and in, in this case, I'll explode it. Uh, explode. I'll add an angle of 90, uncheck explode here, and click OK. And now I've got my, turn off my old snaps, and I'll just place that cubicle there. Of course, I need a couple of chairs here. So I'm just going to go ahead and select insert block. Again, it brings up just as if I double clicked and I'll go ahead and plop in this chair. And I probably should have rotated it. Uh, it's not the point of the demo. It's to show you how easy it is to bring in content. So those are blocks, um, having inserted those easily from another drawing. Now, a um, couple of options that we may have seen there uh, that were kind of grayed out is that we have the option to insert and redefine, redefine only, or insert it as block. I'm going to use the rename command real quick here. And I'm going to go ahead and rename this block chair to chair 1. And then I'm going to go to Design Center, and here I have a chair one. Let's zoom in on this a little bit. And uh, <laughs> that doesn't do any good. All right, there we go. Now I'm going to go ahead and right click, and I could insert another chair or just redefine this chair. Obviously a little too big, but um, uh, I think you get the idea. I can easily redefine. If I were just to drag and drop it and I had the chair in there, it would not redefine it. So um, uh, you have that option there. Or to insert 
as well as redefine the block. So some pretty cool stuff there. So with blocks, we can only bring in uh, one block at a time because it's always looking for that insertion point. That being said, if I go to my home folder, to the sample folder for Design Center, there are some drawings here. And I may uh, need some text styles. There we go. And so I'm going to go here and select text styles. So with text styles, should probably undock this so we can see my command line a little bit. All right, so with text styles, I can easily drag that style into this drawing. And I'm just going to go ahead and type ST for the style dialog, and you'll see that's now been added. I'll go ahead and go to Design Center again, and I can right mouse click to add a text style. I can also hold down on the control key to be specific about selecting one or more text styles. Uh, for that matter, I can also hold down on the shift key, select all the text styles, and drag them into my drawing. And there you go. So I don't have to recreate these styles if I know they exist in another drawing. And then I can easily use those. The same thing works with layers. We, we, we now have some additional layers because we added a cubicle and furniture. Uh, but let's say that um, we need, do we, we don't have any in there. Let's go back to my drawing. Not even sure why I went there. Right, so we want to go to uh, the, one of my sample drawings here, and I want to have these particular layers right here in my drawing. And I'm just dragging and dropping, and now they're available. So one thing uh, to keep in mind with styles is that uh, just like a block, uh, Although block, we can redefine as we insert it. It does not work that way with text styles, dimension styles, or layers. If I have a um, layer in this drawing that was already called text and it had a color of red, then having dragged and dropped in a new layer with the color I think this is 142 or something, uh, it would actually inherit the properties of the layer already in the drawing. I hope that makes sense. So the drawing that are, the layer, textile, dimension style, any style that already exists in the drawing is going to be the dominant style. Anything you insert after the fact um, will inherit those properties. So hope that makes sense. If we have some time later, if you have questions about it, we can always do a little demo of that. Okay, so I've, I've brought in some text styles, I've brought in some uh, blocks, and we've also inserted, oops, inserted a drawing as a, um, as a XREF. All right, so there may be times that you aren't quite sure where something is. Okay, so I maybe want to add a hatch pattern to this particular drawing. And it's not part of the AutoCAD hatch patterns. I know that it's somewhere in, in this folder right here, but I'm not quite sure where. So what I can do is use the search function here. Oops, search. And I'm going to go ahead, and as you can see, I've already set it to hatch patterns, but these are the things we can search for with using Design Center. Here's the path. I did initially have to browse to this and tell it I want to search subfolders. But now I want to go ahead and search for this particular hatch pattern. 
And yeah, I cheated. I copied it off of a text file and pasted it here. Okay, my, you know, I'm lazy. What can I say? Um, anyway, here I have this uh, tef, uh, hatch pattern now. And with Design Center, let's go ahead and dock this again. Oh, okay, now I lost my. All right, with this here, I can double click on that name and it shows that hatch pattern uh, in Design Center now. And it's just a, uh, an individual pattern file. Now what's kind of cool about this is that once it's in here, I can go ahead and just drag and drop it into my drawing. So a uh, pretty quick way to make use of these individual hatch patterns. Now, yes, we could have gotten in, gone into the hatch command and, and selected it there, but uh, it may have required a lot of browsing. You know, here I just did a quick search for it, and uh, it, it finds it rather quickly. Alrighty, uh, so we probably want to add some more stuff to this like I said I also want to do the um, do a little bit of landscaping here as well and I just happen to have uh, a drawing here oops this one here and I'm called landscaping there's actually a lot more than just landscaping we have a car here though I guess it depends where you live sometimes that's part of the landscape right um, but here's a nice little preview and uh, kind of looks like a K car from the 80s. All right, uh, but we also have some shrubs here, so evergreen tree and so forth. Now I can easily, just like anything else, insert that tree, all right? And um, it brings it in. And in this case here, it does, I'm on layer zero and that's the layer I've um, uh, plopped it on as well. What works a lot easier, if I'm going to reuse these all the time, uh, well, one, I could go ahead and add this to my favorites, right? So I click add that to favorites. If I go to the favorites here, there's a link to that file, and it allows me to quickly get to it. If I ever need to get rid of that um, link, um, I can go to organize favorites which brings up the Windows Explorer dialog, and I can just delete this link. Uh, and it's not gonna affect the drawing, just a shortcut. Uh, for right now, I'll go ahead and leave that there. Uh, but what I like to do is, and we'll, we'll now take a look at palettes, by the way, is I like to create a palette of my blocks. So before I um, actually do what I wanna do, let's go ahead and take a look at where our palette uh, tool palettes are. Uh, so tool palettes are, and I always look for this just because I always type control three and it's right there, the biggest icon there and I miss it, right? <laughs> Awkward moment. Okay, so tool palettes. Hey, this is our palette with a bunch of pre-made tool palettes. Okay, and Control three is what I use to get to this quickly. I use it quite often, just like the properties palette. These are all sample palettes, okay, within the container palette. These are actually my tool palettes. And what I wanna do is actually add some of my own stuff. I may even wanna delete some of these samples later. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and create a landscaping palette right now. Can't remember if we have one or not, but I'm going to create one. You'll notice that if I select blocks in the tree view, it has here create tool palette. And so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And my cursor is going a little circular here on me, but it has quickly created this landscaping palette. And by selecting the blocks I don't want, I'm just gonna remove those. Uh, maybe I wanna keep hot tub on there, but um, for the most part, I'm just gonna delete one more here. Um, you, I've just quickly created a palette out of these blocks. So now I don't even 
really neat design center. But the, having said that, design center is very powerful, and I probably do want to let's go ahead and minimize that. Uh, I probably do want to continue using it. But here's what I like about this palette, these tool palettes. We can, just like I did with Design Center, redefine a block. Uh, since this block doesn't exist, it's grayed out. Um, I can go into the block editor and modify this block. Cut, copy. Copy, I would make another uh, clump of trees, which I could then modify uh, the, uh, the palette properties. Delete, rename. Update the tool image if I've redefined it I may, and modified the block, I may want to update that. I can also point to a uh, PNG file, uh, a specific image for maybe uh, a standard that I go by. But here's the power of it, and that's the properties. So um, here, obviously we can rename it, give it a different description. It tells me uh, the current name of that block and you'll see that it also has a path to the source file that um, where that block is contained. This is important. Uh, these palettes can be shared uh, over a network and or you may want to move the file that these um, blocks are located into a different location. Well, keep in mind that the path is hard-coded to the drawing file, which um, is the container for these blocks. So you would have to modify this particular path by browsing to its location. You could modify the XML file, but um, if you just got a few blocks, it may just be easier to browse or recreate the palette for that matter. We can set a scale here. By default, it's just going to insert it at one, the scale factor, the scale, or the size that it was created in. But we can set an auxiliary scale based upon either the dim scale or a plot scale. Typically, um, I, well, it's up to you. You know how your workflow is as to what scale factor you want to assign to it. We can always specify that, hey, I want to rotate this, you know, X number of degrees. Uh, again, that's up to you. Prompt for rotation. Uh, typically, I, you know, as a default, I may want to have yes. Uh, I never know what I'm going to uh, change as far as rotation goes. Uh, explode. I like to leave this on no. Uh, changing it to yes. Uh, there are times to explode a block, but for the most part, why lose that data? Why ruin the integrity of that block? Uh, there are other things we can do with blocks. We can count them, create a bill of materials, whatever. And um, we it won't do any good to explode it. However, that being said, there are times where you need to do that. In that particular... Um, Drawing in this particular drawing, I don't have a uh, landscaping. I've, I created it earlier, but uh, forgot to create it for this uh, session. So let's just put it on a hatching layer, just for grins. And I have no idea what color layer that is. But once I click OK here, and then pick on this <laughs> red tree, um, it now has all those properties assigned to it, prompts me for a rotation, and if we select this, you'll see it's on that hatching layer. Just for grins, we'll go ahead and change that to green to just kind of make it a little more better for demo purposes. But um, a great way to control consistency uh, in your AutoCAD standards. So we've easily created a tool palette uh, using blocks. We can do the same thing with our hatch pattern. Uh, it is a little more uh, time consuming. So I can pick one hatch pattern here. Actually, let me make sure I pick it. And create a tool palette of that hatch pattern. And just like with the blocks, I can 
assign properties, scale factors, uh, layers, and so forth to that hatch pattern. So a great way to quickly grab uh, standards. Let me open up a drawing here real quick. Um, let's use this one here. Oftentimes, I will work with somebody else's uh, data and have to modify their drawings. I don't know what their standards are. I don't care. I just need to get this stuff drawn, okay? So let's say I need to uh, insert some monitors, okay? Uh, well, I'm not going to be doing it in this drawing. I'm going to be doing it in the new drawing. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and drag and drop this over my palette. Right-clicking on this, going into Properties, you'll see that it has the layer assigned to it as well as the color for that layer and any other uh, properties that have been assigned to it. I'll just leave everything as a default there. Now going back to my drawing, I'll go ahead and click on that, insert it, and I'm not going to worry about rotation or anything here. Okay, but now I've plopped that in the drawing, and in addition to the block, we now have a CPU layer, which didn't exist previously. So I use this as a scratch pad, and it doesn't just have to be, whoops, uh, it just doesn't always have to be just uh, an object like a block or a hatch. I'm going to go ahead and drag and drop some text, okay? So again, go into Properties, and it's been assigned to a layer called Employee, Colors by Layer, and it's an mText object. So I'm again, oh, and here we go, textile, what textile it's using. I'm again enforcing standards or ensuring that I have consistency in my drawing. Go ahead and plop this in here and imported text. And having selected that text, it is architect textile layer employee. So uh, a great tool to quickly get something done if you're using somebody else's work. All right, I got about probably three to five minutes or so. I'll wrap this up by saying, hey, I've got these palettes here, and uh, I put a lot of hard work into it. Uh, keep in mind if you're going to relocate these and they're pointing to blocks, you want to um, make sure the block exists. Uh, but what if uh, you want to reorganize these? I don't, I don't want to see all these uh, tabs here. Let me turn off my um, properties palette just to give a little room here. Center this. Okay, I don't want to. I, want, I don't want all these tabs here. I've got my own libraries. I've got the uh, the hatch or hardwood floor palette, and I've got my landscape palette here. If I Select here, you're going to see that we have all these different palettes here that are showing right now. If I right mouse click over the title bar, you'll see those uh, same palettes listed. And oh, where was it? Oh, I guess we don't have that. Um, so, anyway. What we have the option of doing is actually customizing what we see here as well as the commands that are on it. Uh, we've briefly touched on that, but I'm going into the Customize Palettes dialog. And here, what I can do is create not only new palettes, and I do this just by right-clicking. I can import a palette. This actually looks for an X. TP file that I may have somewhere on the hard drive. So I can import these, I can uh, rename these palettes, delete them, export them. But I, what else I can do here is I can create a palette group. And really doesn't matter uh, where you right mouse click, but I'm going to create a new group. And we'll just call this BC's group. Thank you.
I've never tried that with an apostrophe, but it should work. All right, then I'm going to go ahead and drag and drop this above these groups here. And then I'm going to go ahead and just drag and drop my palettes into this group. Once I've done that, over here we have our palettes. And here, if I right mouse click over that title bar, we actually have my group. So it only shows those two palettes. I can always turn on other groups. I mean, so switch back to the annotation group, architectural. Okay, there's only one palette there. Or I can show all groups. Whoops. All groups. But an easy way to um, uh, organize your palettes. Now, if I'm going to be wanting to use these on a network location or share them with my colleagues, I may want to go into customized palettes. I could either export these individually again as an XTP file, but even easier yet, I could go ahead and export the entire group or all the palettes, but in this case, export the group. And you'll see that that is called an XPG file. And then I would import them through that dialog box as well. So as you can see, uh, you know we've we've uh, we've covered most of this. And it's still kind of a glossy overview. You really need to have work with it to um, get comfortable with it. If you haven't used Design Center, if you haven't used uh, tool palettes uh, to their full extent, um, I encourage you to do so. They can make your life a lot easier. Uh, you know, getting that job out the door, uh, impress your friends. You know, that type of thing. Anyway, uh, I think that about wraps it up for right now. Uh, we'll go ahead and have uh, Victoria go over the uh, rest of the PowerPoint, and then we will endeavor to answer your questions. Well, I hope we'll have Victoria do this. Hi, Volker. Yes, I'm back. <laughs> yeah. Can you, um, I think it's still showing your screen. Yeah, it, it is. My fault. My bad. My bad. That's okay. I'm, take, I'm taking it from you. All right. All right. Sorry about this. You get a really speedy version of the presentation here. Oh, that's awkward. Okay, I clicked on the link. <laughs> Almost there. Here we go. Okay, you did just see the demo. Uh, we've got some additional resources for you about Design Center Online and uh, some commands for Design Center, um, some help documentation on how to work with Design Center if you need a refresher. Um, how to install the CAD manager, control utility, and how to import and export tool palettes. Coming attractions. Uh, welcome to the third dimension, Materials Matter. That's next week with uh, Steve and myself. And after that, I believe Dave Pothier will be talking about the Express tools in AutoCAD. Uh, after that, building blocks revisited, back to basics. And then four weeks out, Beyond the Basics, Attributes, Making the Most of Your Data. You can visit us at autodesk.com slash help dash webinars to register if, um, if you need to do that. If you want to leave us some additional feedback, you can go to HTTP and then follow this link that's on the screen there. I'm not going to read it out because it's always awkward. <laughs> uh, or you can download the slide deck and just click on the link there. So again, this is the Autodesk Help webinar series. Check out our landing page. This will show you the next uh, presentations coming up if you want to see what's on the, on the agenda.
You can leave us some questions after the presentation by visiting the forum. Uh, you'll also receive a link for this in your email. And you can leave us feedback on the current webinar, future webinar ideas that you might have. I did see a couple in the chat window today. Uh, make sure that you give us that feedback and we'll try to incorporate those into some future webinars for you. And you can also email us directly at autodesk.help.webinars at autodesk.com. Make sure you put in the subject line, build your AutoCAD IQ so that it comes to the right team. All right. And with that said, I believe we have one more poll before we get into the Q&A. Oh, what am I doing here? Here we go. Okay, I'm going to run this last poll here. Uh, please tell us, we'd like to know, did you learn something new in today's webinar? It looks like the majority of people did learn something new. Some answers still coming in here. I'll give it a few more seconds before I close it out. Okay, and then I'll show you that. There we go, 95% of you learned something new today. I think that's pretty darn good. Uh, thanks, Volker. That's great. Yeah, that's... Um, I'm I'm actually always glad to see that as a result. I, as I always say, I, I don't want to waste your time. If you didn't learn anything new, um, yeah, I'm not sure what to say there. Uh, I, uh, again, this is a back to basics. So, um, uh, hey, I, I really hope you make use of these tools. Now, I did not get a chance to look through the chat window, uh, Victoria or Naman. Are, are there any... Um, any questions we should be covering or? There are a couple of questions. Uh, I just transferred control back to you, Volker, mm -hmm. if you'd like to. Just, to, just in case you need the AutoCAD window there. Sure. Um, let me open up my chat window again here. Um, could, could you explain uh, hmm, how our, um, oh, sorry. So the tool palettes are saved. Uh, you can save them in the workspace. Can you um, can you just show people where they can do that, how they can save the workspace? Oh, so if I always want those to be available. Yep. Uh, okay, so in this case, maybe I want to anchor this on the right and always have it be available. Uh, what I'm going to do is go here. Uh, there's this little gear icon. Uh, this is your workspace settings. And I'm going to use save current as. Uh, AutoCAD LT only has one default workspace, drafting and annotation. Uh, you'll see I have two extra ones here because I've saved those. AutoCAD itself has uh, three uh, workspaces, but you can add or remove those. I'm going to click Save Current As, and I can either type in a name here, or as I like to do it, I just like to change the default name a little bit. So maybe... Um, AD, okay, I'll just call this custom, yeah, just for grins, All right? But that's the workspace that has my tool palettes available every time I launch, as well as my design center, and going into that settings dialog, workspace settings, I can actually tell AutoCAD, look, every time I launch, go ahead and make this my default workspace to uh, start AutoCAD with. So I'm going to keep it on VC drafting, but uh, you know you could certainly change it like that. An important thing is to make sure this is selected as do not save current uh, changes to workspace. If you set it to automatically save workspace changes, anytime you move a palette or a toolbar or a ribbon pal panel, it doesn't matter, it's going to save it to your workspace. So if you always want it to be consistent, leave it on do not save changes to workspace because once you click OK here, you've actually saved your workspace settings the way they are. Thanks, Volker. Yep. Um, could you clarify, uh, there seems to be a little bit of confusion as to whether um, tool palettes are drawing specific 
or if they're available in multiple drawings or how to get all of these tools that you just customize available across all of your drawings. Yeah, so um, in the same session of AutoCAD, the tool palettes are going to be available for every drawing. Actually, anytime you launch AutoCAD, whatever modifications you've made to your palettes are going to um, uh, still be there, okay? Because um, unlike any other customization in AutoCAD, AutoCAD uh, customizes everything in the CUI file with the exception of the tool palettes uh, and ACAD PGP, but that's a different story. The tool palettes themselves, and I'm right mouse clicking over the options dialog, okay? The tool palette location is stored under files and tool palette file locations, what an appropriate name, huh? And there's my path. Okay, so I'm, I'm actually just going to click in here and copy this uh, to the clipboard. So open up Windows Explorer, paste, go, and that is the location. So it's App Data Roaming Autodesk uh, LT, in this case R22 ENU Support Tool Palettes. It's a nested path, but but that's where it's at, and you'll see that uh, here. I will have now my custom palettes as well, okay? But if you're gonna export them to another workstation, you want to use the export option in AutoCAD and then import them uh, that I showed you previously, it, um, just to make sure everything works. Um, and it'll, it'll then export all the stuff that you need. Uh, but that's that's it. They're, that's where they're located on the hard drive. You could store them on the network, um, and um, they'll be available anytime you use AutoCAD. Well, also, can I uh, add something to that? Sorry, Victoria. Um, hey, uh, you, so I think you probably almost answered somebody else's question about how can I have it on multiple computers and. Um, Instead of uh, having it uh, locally, you can switch it to uh, a custom location on the network, and then every time you make changes, it'll be available to anybody in the office. So you can have company-wide tool palettes, as well as you can add multiple paths uh, within your tool palette paths and have multiple tool, tool palettes load up uh, from the server as well. Correct. Yes. Yes. And you would do that in the options dialog. There are some nuances. We're not going to have time to get into them here right now. Um, uh, you know, some people prefer to make these palettes read-only and have everything be monitored by the CAD manager or IT guy, a gal, whatever. And uh, you know, so there are some. There may be some gotchas there that uh, we, you know, there's always going to be documentation on that, or we can help out in product support or in the forums. But for the most part, this is how it works. You, you point to the location where those pallets are at, and uh, they'll be available to everybody. There was another question. Hi, uh, thanks, Walker. Yeah. Thanks, Noah. Um, I'm sorry, Naman. Uh, yeah, there was another question. He says, uh, can you please redo the step of creating a tool pallet from the blocks folder, please? Yeah, sure. I can, certainly. I'll be happy to, in fact. So um, let me go ahead and uh, just drag the palette out here. And I'm going to go, let's also take it off of auto-hide. And this will have to be the last little item, and then we're going to have to call it quits. So um, uh, go to basic plan here, select my blocks. Okay, and from here, so I've only got two blocks here, and by the way, layouts can be brought in as well. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and create tool palette. And so it creates this palette, and, which has a couple of doors in this case, and, and two title uh, layouts with title blocks uh, assigned to them, so I've, or the blocks within those layouts. By the way, you know, just quickly, I, I didn't show this, but I can drag my layouts in here, and now I have an A-sized and a D-sized layout in my drawing. 
those didn't exist before. So we're, we are out of time. I'm, I'm sorry that last part got rushed there. I hope having redone that, uh, I clarified what I did, just right mouse clicking over Design Center. Again, we know your time's valuable and we really appreciate that you were able to attend and hopefully gained a little bit of AutoCAD IQ knowledge. So Naman, Victoria, and I are going to now say goodbye. Thanks again, everybody. Yeah, thanks for joining us.